allows you to get the best pricing at a national level, component by component, because you're going out finding the best supplier of the battery, the best supplier of the packaging, and the toy itself. Um, the real beauty is the transparency to the buyer. So uh, you know the bill of material pricing, often you're buying it direct from the sub-supplier who's delivering it to the assembly partner, so it's total transparency for you, the buyer. However, of course, there is the firewall security. It's very hard for the, the sub-supplier to um, leap over the firewall and sell directly to the customers, your customers. And also there's the reverse hijack projection, uh, protection, I'm sorry. I've had cases where um, my customer's competition knew that they were buying out of China, bribed someone at the, the Chinese customs office, found out that the trucks were leaving my facility in Dongguan, someone knocks on my door um, claiming to be a buyer interested in buying this product. You know, I, I call my customer right away and say, someone's snooping around, here's the name, business card of the guy, you know, I'm happy to be a firewall there so that there's no um, way that that competition of my customer can go up the supply chain and find out who the actual suppliers are, uh, sub-suppliers. Now, that's an overview of how do you structure the firewall. It may sound simple, but there are a lot of, of uh, commonly overlooked items, starting with the value-added tax, or VAT. Um, I think that probably in the, in, the, in the near future, in the next few seminars, there might be a, a presentation just on value-added tax because it's one of the most complex things to figure out in China sourcing. But for, for the sake of today, um, realize that in most cases, there is a, a VAT rebate due at exportation. So if your assembly partner isn't structured to take the VAT invoices from the suppliers, sub-suppliers, apply, apply them to the tax bureau, and get a refund on your behalf, you might be wasting anywhere from 5 to 15% of the purchase value. So it's essential that your assembly partner or any manufacturer you know, or partner in China for that matter, has a structure in place for VAT. Um, the next issue is currency conversion. Um, so now that the US dollar is, is losing uh, ground against the RMB, um, more and more suppliers don't want to deal in US dollars. So if your assembly partner is um, can deal in US dollars, great. If your sub-suppliers cannot, you've, you've got a problem. So. Sometimes it makes sense for the assembly partner to take your U.S. dollars, convert it into RMB, and pay the sub-suppliers on, on your behalf. So you need to make sure that both your sub-suppliers and your assembly partner can deal in the currency that you need to transact in. Um, the second issue, uh, third issue actually, is the, the warranty terms. Um, let's go back to that battery and going into a toy. Now, you need to structure two parallel levels of warranty agreements. For example, your primary warranty is with your assembly partner. You're paying him a certain fee to take given components, inspect them according to your inspection requirements, and assemble it according to your work, work instructions. So if he fails to do that, maybe he puts the batteries in upside down or forgets to stick the batteries or goes into the box backwards, he should be on the line to uh, give you compensation for those mistakes. However, it's very unlikely that the assembly partner is going to offer a warranty on the batteries. He can inspect them for you, but he's not a battery manufacturer, so he's not going to promise that these batteries will last a certain amount of hours. So it's important that you structure your warranty terms both with, in this case, the battery supplier as well as for the assembly partner. Um, it can be a chore to set up these uh, double layer of, of warranty agreements, um, but it will certainly help you down the line if there is ever a a uh, issue where you need to uh, have product recall or or have product rework. It's good to have that in advance. Um, the last issue is the, the document trail. I mentioned before that you're spending a lot of time setting up these work instructions, assembly instructions with your assembly partner. It would be horrific if the, those documents landed in the wrong hands, either a competitor in China or a competitor back home. So, um, for example, at, at our factory, and you could do this with your sub-suppliers even. We have clear um, rules and regulations that documents are not to be photocopied, um, they get their password protected, um, you know, that, and I actually assign one person as a document manager to uh, look after and store the documents. So say we're running the toy and battery that I mentioned. Um, a few hours before we, we run that assembly, um, the production manager will go to the, to the cabinet, 
open up the documents, take them out to the assembly line, put them in a clipboard. A few hours later, when the assembly is done, the clipboards are taken down and returned to the office. I know it's a bit overkill, but I sleep better at night knowing that there are policies in place. Um, sure, some uh, an employee could always take this information and find a way to copy it or get it out if there is financial gain. But by having on paper and on the wall stated rules about it, at least um, I know that it's not innocent if it happens and I can act accordingly. Um, it allows me to sleep a little bit better at night. So that, that's an overview of, of how to, um, what are some of the options if you're going to, what are some of the ways to protect yourself if you're going to use the traditional buyer-seller route. And then I spent some time going over um, a more complex, but certainly a more secure option, building your own firewall. Um, and I hope today that by explaining some of these horror stories, I haven't scared anyone away from China because it's a, it is really a great place to do business. But as I mentioned before, you know, pray for the best, but plan for the worst. Um, in conclusion, our company, we're members of the American Chamber, British Chamber, Canadian Chamber of Commerce. So if you have any questions, I'll do my best to, to point you in the right direction. On that note, um, thank you for your, your attention today. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Questions? Any questions? There you go. I'm not familiar with the term RMV when you're talking about the currency conversion. Okay. What is what does that refer to? Uh, RMV or the people's it's the uh, monetary unit for China. So sometimes it's written as CNY or RMB. So it's just the, the local term. Everyone uses a it sounds a little bit different depending on who says it, where you are in China. Yes. Context for the UN, right? Yes. Any other questions? Faced uh, security issues already, where your, your uh, product has has been compromised and show like this. I hope not. <laughs> not yet, I'll listen. <laughs> but and I mentioned before, if anyone wants that memo of understanding, uh, give me your business card. I'd be happy to send it to you after the presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thanks. Thank you.